Blender is easier than you think. I know we've all been there where you open up the software and go Blender! YouTubers like 12th Hour, Blender Guru, and Polly J Ford all get millions of views because of their amazing Blender skills. And you can literally do the same in no time. And maybe get some cash along the way if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> well, assuming you've already downloaded Blender, you have downloaded Blender, right? Open that orange up and create a general project. It'd be good to save this as well by using Control S on your keyboard and naming the file whatever you want. First things first is to click on the default cube, hit them with that Control X combo, and then replace it by using Shift A, Mesh, and Choose Cube. Just like in real life, you have to learn how to move and look around. And you can start by taking your mouse and pressing the scroll wheel button while holding Shift. Now you can go flying anywhere in the software. Turning is just as easy. Use the exact same button but without Shift to look 360 degrees and scroll up and down to zoom in or out. Look at those sweet details on this cube. Viewport in Blender comes with many helpful tools, but some important ones to know are up in the top right. This infinity sign right here will hide everything except your objects and models, which will be really useful when dealing with a lot of bones or light stirring processes like posing and animating. These four circles right beside the previous button will give you different viewing abilities. Wireframe mode allows you to see through objects and its geometry. Solid mode gives you fullness to the objects. Material preview adds textures or color in. And the rendered view is the big picture. Although, depending on the project, your computer might... I know you're itching to import and animate something, but I need to show you guys how to work the camera and move objects. However, for your viewing pleasure, I won't use the default cube. If you look at your side on the left, these three buttons are extremely important to controlling objects. The position button lets you translate your object anywhere in the 3D space. The rotation will of course let your object spin around. And scale creates either something really, really small or really big. With this information, you can now move the camera around and view the render by clicking on the camera icon near the right or simply pressing numpad zero. Now you're- oh, I'm not saying that. Sometimes when your scene is too big, your objects may fade out of the render distance, so what you need to do to fix it is head over to this menu under the camera tab and change the endpoint to be bigger. Now you've just increased your render distance. Speaking of rendering, you know how your favorite movies or cutscenes get that amazing subtle or shaky camera movement to hide any imperfections? <coughs> Star Wars. Um, well, you can do that too with a click of a button. If you check the description of this video, you'll find a Blender add-on called Camera Shakeify and Sketchfab Importer. Download the latest release of these two and import into Blender by heading to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, Install the camera, install the entire zip file, and be sure to check this box off to enable it. Zooming back into the camera menu, there's now a drop down saying Camera Shakeify. It will have a plus icon that you can click on and that will open up several options of different types of camera shakes you can use. Now with the click of a button, you can apply one of these to the camera, customize the properties such as speed or intensity, and it's that simple. I think many of you who are new to Blender will come to realize that many things that you want to achieve in it are made much easier through add-ons. We're almost able to import models, but what's the point of importing if you can't see anything? So let's talk about the basics of lighting so you can go from this to this. Depending on the scene, the lighting type will vary. So for an example, I'm going to use a reflective plane that I made by adding a mesh, plane, creating a new material in the material tab on the right, and then lowering the roughness and raising the metallic value. Now the plane is extremely reflective. Just for more references, I added a glowing and non-glowing cube, which can be made by changing the emission value in the material tab as well. Oh yeah, I also added a blank white wall. The first light is the point light. This light right here emits light in all directions. I know a lot of people use this for things such as light bulbs and some other scenarios. The area light right here emits light towards a specific surface. I actually use this one a lot to light my scenes and you can think of it as having a virtual softbox. The spotlight is pretty self-explanatory, it's literally a light in a, a spot. Then the sunlight definitely is the most useful for outside scenes or just creating environmental lighting in general. Luckily for us noobs like myself, add-ons were created to help with lighting. In fact, I almost never use regular lighting because with this free add-on called Real Sky, link in the description by the way, I can create any type of outside lighting with a click of a button and it actually looks great too. Just look at how it shows the details on the Mandalorian model. I almost forgot to mention, if you want to adjust regular lighting, simply click on a light, then head over to the menu on the right Man, I'm rhyming. Then you can adjust the power, color, and even size. So definitely have fun with it. Now the moment you've been waiting for, how to import models. There's so many resources online where you can find 3D models, but the main one I'm going to show you is Sketchfab. If you downloaded the Sketchfab add-on like I told you earlier, 
then this is what you use to import assets. Before doing anything with Sketchfab, go back to your add-ons tab, find Sketchfab, and open this little dropdown. The models will not import for you unless a folder is chosen for them to go to. And if I didn't tell you this, you'd probably be losing your mind wondering why it's not working. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Going back to the Sketchfab menu, literally it's as simple as typing the model you're looking for using different keywords to find it and selecting import. Now there are occasions where the model may not be visible immediately because it's probably off in space somewhere, so press Shift S and choose selection to cursor. The model will now teleport right in front of you for you to use how you wish. These models are made by other people in the 3D community, so be sure to check how you can use them. The license can be found under the model within Blender or look on the Sketchfab website for an explanation of what exactly you're allowed to do. Luckily for us, most of the time models are completely free to use with no limitations. Just be sure to give credit to the original creator whenever you're using their work. I know when I first started using Blender and Sketchfab, my biggest goal was always animation and Sketchfab definitely made that easier as it provided me with any model I could ask for. Not all models come rigged and when they do, 99% of the time, it won't work correctly. If you actually want to rig your model in like two minutes or less with little to no effort, then there's this website called Mixamo which will be your friend. This is a completely free auto rigger that can rig any human-like model. So here's the process from having a completely stone dead statue to giving your model some sweet life. Using the Sketchfab add-on, I'm going to import a rigged Stormtrooper. Right off the bat, the Stormtrooper not only is too big, but the bones are completely broken. I fix the broken bones by heading into edit mode, hovering over all the bones, and quite literally just deleting them as we we don't need them since it doesn't work anyway. I didn't say this earlier, but if you want to delete something, you can either use Control X or right click and hit delete. Back in object mode, I want to resize the Stormtrooper and place it at the origin of my setup. I did that by finding the scene collection on the right, choosing the model, and using Shift S to enable the option Selection to Cursor. Then resizing was easy of course by using the S key alone. In the past, sometimes the textures can get really weird, so I would say it's best to hover over the entire model, hold Shift and click a part of the model, and then use the command Control J to join the model into a mesh. Now the hard part is done and you're this much closer to having your model hit the gritty. So how do you actually get this model exported and rigged? You want to head to file, go down to export as FPX and there should be a menu that shows up. Name your model whatever you want and then add premix following it. It's not necessary but naming your model like this will make it much easier to know what it is in the future. On the right side of the menu there's an option called path mode. You absolutely need to turn the path mode to copy and click the little button beside it. Trust me, your life will be 10 times better. Now you can save the FBX somewhere that's easy to access and this is the part of the video where Mixamo comes in. If you don't have an Adobe account, you'll need to create one in order to use Mixamo. This is the same company that runs softwares like Photoshop and Premiere Pro, so I'm sure you can trust them. In Mixamo, there's an upload character button. You want to use this to find your exported FBX model from earlier. After waiting for hopefully a not so long amount of time, the rigging menu will be given to you. Pretty self-explanatory. Rotate your model to face forwards and drag the points to the right spots. Voila! That is looking noise. You're free to see different types of animations with your model or you can just download the model as a binary FBX. Once downloaded, I recommend renaming the file to something else and adding postmix just so you know that this file has already been rigged. Heading back to Blender, go to file, import as FBX and choose your rigged model. Yeah, that's a little bit broken. It's pretty easy to fix though. Click on the broken model first, then shift click the model that already has textures and use the command control L. You should see the words link materials. Once you do that, then the textures will be working just fine. This process is much faster than if you were to manually rig a model. As I mentioned earlier, this is just one of the resources where you can find models at. There's a website called the Models Resource which lets you have access to just about all game assets including maps for newer releases all the way to really really old releases. I actually downloaded Rainbow Road from Mario Kart Wii a long time ago and it was really really cool to explore the map and see beyond what the game limits you to. DeviantArt is another helpful resource to find models. Personally, I don't use this as often, but it doesn't mean it won't be useful to you. For those who want specific models related to the games Fortnite or Minecraft, there's a lot of communities that rip assets from the game files all the time. In fact, there's actually a Blender add-on called MC Prep, which lets you import anything Minecraft related, including your own worlds that you've built, which is pretty cool. Two honorable mentions are Source Filmmaker and Gary's Mod on the Steam Workshop, but I won't go into depth on that. Posing in animation happened to be some of Blender's greatest features. It's how we get releases such as the Mario movie and even CGI from amazing movies like The Flash and Ant-Man. 
bro. They're so bad. Seriously though, mastering posing in Blender leads to all kinds of opportunities and that's all animation is. When you have a model you'd like to pose, click the little bones you see on the body until they light up and then head towards the top left so you can go from object mode to pose mode. If you click on a bone and use the rotation tool, you can rotate the fingers, hands, arms, legs, quite literally any way you want. When I was learning posing, it's always good to use references to real life as much as you can, whether it's from another source or taking your own references of yourself. Now, of course, you aren't going to be a pro at this right away, but there's really, really helpful tutorials on YouTube for things like this. And so I'll leave as many helpful videos as I can down in the description. As for animation, it's similar to any video editing software, just extreme the process of animating is going to be like posing except you combine them to create movement click on a bone in pose mode press i to place a keyframe on all and then move forward on the timeline to repeat that now when you play it back you have your first animation <sighs> so the remaining question is how do you use all this and then export your beautiful project so you can show it off to your friends on the right you'll see a little tv icon also known as the render tab whoa render tab Changing just a couple of values in the render tab can be the difference between an hour render time versus just a couple of minutes or less. So definitely pay attention to all of these settings. First of all, EV and Cycles are the main two render engines. EV is pretty much a faster, less detailed render engine and Cycles is what you use when you want to have really, really detailed scenes with ray tracing. This is a scene from EV for reference and here's the exact same scene with Cycles. Pretty crazy, right? For both render engines, you'll be given a slider for the amount of noise and samples. Noise is like that static you see on really old TVs or camcorders. You really don't want a lot of it, especially if you're going for realism. The lower the value of the noise, the higher the render time will be and vice versa. For the samples, all you need to know is that the higher amount, the more detail. This next setting is going to be extremely useful to a lot of you who want to export transparent videos. In the film dropdown, you can enable the transparent background so that way you'll still keep all the lighting however the sky will be completely gone making for some really cool editing opportunities. If you have a good PC, then go down in the render tab and there's an option called final render. Definitely turn on the option persistent data as it will help you to speed up your render times a lot. With your rendering settings done, go to the output tab and choose the following. A place for your project to go a PNG if you are exporting a photo, and FFmpeg if you're exporting a video. In encoding, set encoder to MPEG4, speed to real time, and well, export! Going off script, I'd like to thank you guys for 1,000 subscribers. Literally finally hit on this channel after, like, what, one to two years now? So, that is absolutely amazing. Thank you guys.